Hey guys, this is Vol, and in this video I'd like to talk about Warhammer 40,000, otherwise known as 40k, which of course is um, a game that I've been playing lately. Um, as you guys know, I've put a lot of uh, Warhammer Fantasy videos on my page, uh, although if you do use the search function on the uh, channel there, you'll find that I've done a couple of um, battle reports uh, you know, years ago or a year or two ago, featuring my Eldar army um, up against you know, Chaos and Dark Angels and so forth. But uh, yeah, it's been fantasy for the longest time during 7th edition. Once once 8th edition came out, obviously by then I'd got sort of about six armies together and I'd played a lot of fantasy. And of course, uh, you know, the enjoyment of, of Weimar slowing down a little bit with 8th edition, although I'm still enjoying it and playing it. But um, just uh, recently I've collected a uh, Weimar 40,000 army and I've been playing some games. And um, eventually once the army sort of gets to a point where I'm happy with the paint job and I've got some good looking games, I'm gonna start doing some battle reports on it. Just my feelings about um, Warhammer 40,000 40, in general. Uh, it's a it's quite a different game from fantasy. Um, a lot of people uh, feel that it's a little bit of a, like um, a more simplified version of the game. It's um, the skill ceilings perhaps a little bit lower. Some of the rules are a bit clunkier, like um, just to give some examples, I sort of feel like, um, you know, the rules concerning the way that models removed or uh, the, the rules concerning how a unit might get a cover save for example or the missions in the general rulebook just um, don't feel to capture uh, the finesse of the play very well uh, it's sort of a bit sort of geared for it more more to newer players than to kids more than um, you know than sort of advanced sort of uh, ta tactics and strategy but it, it is a good game and um, I've been enjoying the games I've been having so far one thing that I've found is that um, the uh, the best tactical decisions are a little bit more obvious than in a fantasy. So in that regard, perhaps it's not much of a not as much of a thinking man's game. But I still um, you know have to think carefully about what I'm going to do. I enjoy the game and the luck's a factor, and it's uh, it's a real blast. Um, so just yeah, going to be talking about that a fair bit more. In fact, what I'm going to do is just go to the next photo, and I'm going to start talking about um, my army, which is uh, Chaos Space Marines. In um, what for one forty thousand, I guess one reason why um, you know perhaps I have never gotten into it um, over the last few years is that uh, you know most people just take Space Marines or Imperial Guard or an Imperium army, and although I like the background of one forty thousand more than I do one of Fantasy and like the fluff and the sort of the stories about it. When it comes to actually participating in the hobby, most people go, oh, yep, Space Marines are the coolest, I'll just play them. And you see a lot of Space Marines versus Space Marines games, it's sort of the Power Armor Fest that a lot of people talk about on the internet, and uh, that's the way it went. So um, having played Eldar and not really wanting to go back to Eldar again, I decided to go with Chaos Space Marines just because they're the, um, well, not just because of this, but one one reason why I did pick Chaos Space Marines is that they're the ultimate adversary of, of Space Marines themselves. So most of my games, you know, predictably are going to be against Space Space Marine players, I kind of want that to be the good versus evil thing to actually have a bit more of a spirited sort of event. And um, also, I've been really enjoyed Chaos in Fantasy. Um, I've got lots of spare parts left over from my Weimar kits, so with that in mind, I wanted to do a lot of conversions with my basic squads. This uh, photo, though, shows you the army that I've gone for. It's uh, actually a World Eaters themed army, although originally I was going to go with an undivided sort of word bearers uh, type army, but the way it panned out, um, I've used a lot of red in the color scheme and um, just turned out to be more along the line of world eaters. Um, the list that I've chosen, I've got to describe it, it's not um, an optimal list that you sort of take with the sole intention of winning a no comp tournament. I think if you want to play uh, Chaos Space Marines in 40k at a high level, um, all of your heavy support choices really ought to be Obliterators. They're much better than, say, the Defiler or the you know Havocs or even the Land Raider. Obliterators are really where it's at because uh, you can keep them safe, they're very survivable, and they pump out a lot of damage, and they're very versatile. So there's a lot you can do with them, and um, you know, in games that's really been proven to me. Also, with, with uh, troops choices, really, you know, no, um, Plague Marines are just really one of the, the, the most solid choices, so uh, um, maybe the Tactical Squad, but uh, uh, Nurgle Plague Marines are really where it's at. And for HQ, I think um, De Demon Prince of Slanish with the Lash of Submission, really what you want to do. But um, I've decided to really reject that. Go for an army which is very versatile because really um, what I wanted to do was make this a, you know, uh, uh, an endeavor of enjoyment for me, just painting a lot of different models, also having a nice fair game with a lot of other guys who really just aren't, you know, uh, in it for just, you know, succeeding at sort of ATC level. 
and I wanted the games to be interesting, so I took a very sort of tactically diverse army. What I've got is a uh, Chaos Lord uh, in Terminator army with four Terminators, basically geared for combat in a Land Raider. I've got a Demon Prince, which is undivided wings. He's got warp time. I've got uh, two tactical squads, or Chaos Space Marine squads, as you call them, of ten, with two Melter Guns, a Sparring Champion, and Icon of Undivided, no mark. Um, you know, so two squads like that. I've got one squad of eight Berserkers with a Skull Champion and a Power Fist. I've got two Obliterators, um, all, of the, all of the basic troops. I've got Rhinos, and there's a Defiler. So um, let's go have a look, a closer look at what I've done with the models. This um, next photo shows you my Terminator Lord, who was actually the uh, Zoo 4 from Forge World, and I uh, really loved the model, and it, it partly inspired me to go with the, the army overall. And as you can see, the Terminators here aren't really that much converted. The one guy at the back left I'll show later in another photo has actually got the alternative Zoo 4 head. And um, as you guys can see from these photos so far, not everything's finished. Um, the Terminator Lord and the two Terminators in the front are done, but the other guys at the back are just still yet to receive the yellow makeup. But um, just generally with the color scheme of this army, what I've done is I've spray painted everything black. Then I've gone over the metal parts with tin bits, and I've gone over the basic red with scab red. Then over the metal, I've, I've dry brushed it again with a bolt gun metal. Then I've gone over the red with uh, blood red, and then with a mix of blood red and skull white. And then I've just done some edging with a mix of skull white and sunburst yellow. And that's all I've done, really. There's been some codex gray um, on some areas, and the base is just, you know, scorched brown, graveyard earth, and then um, basically, again, that mix of white and, and yellow. And that's a really simple scheme. It's allowed me to do the army fairly quickly. It does, still, does take some time because there's a lot of layering there, but the, the effect has turned out quite well. Eventually, I might put some transfers on them too. Um, my Terminator Lord, I just use with two lightning claws, and that's it. Um, I know the model's got a like an axe and a like a storm bolter and a power fist, which is kind of cool. But just to take advantage of the Terminator Lord's initiative and um, just general combat ability, uh, the lightning claws have worked best. Next image, this is one of my tactical squads. This is the one tactical squad which is 100% finished. Um, the the champion there with the uh, Marauder head and the Chaos Knight axe is looking pretty cool. Um, this squad is called, um, you know, the, the, skull, the aspiring champion is called Gertok Blightbeard. His name is spelled G-U-E-R-T-O-K, which um, is a bit of fun. And his uh, rhino is called, like, the Blight Rider. In fact, you guys let me help, have to help me decide, should I call the, the, the rhino Blight Rider or the Blight Steed? Can't really quite make up my mind. I kind of like the throwback to the old sort of 90s Knight Rider movie, but oh, the TV series that is, but <laughs> remains to be seen. Um, there's some cool conversions in the squad, mostly parts from the Warhammer Flagellants kit, which are just great with Chaos Space Marines. Um, some, you know, shields and you know, swords and axes and bits from the, um, the Knights and uh, Chaos Warrior Sprues. And uh, just whatever else I could pick up from Knights and Emp from for Warriors of Chaos and Empire um, kits. Next photo, this is my Demon Prince. Um, he's initially been just painted grey, then gone with some other hues involving grey and and uh, you know brown and and yellow, and uh, eventually just highlighted up so he's got this really glowing yellow effect. Um, I'm going to go over him again with a bit more of a whitish effect too because he kind of looks a little bit sickly at the moment, a little bit too greenish. But um, this is generally the uh, the vibe that I want to go for with this guy. Um, he's just really been great in the games too because um, although he always dies with only four wounds, he is great at just mopping up, you know, Space Marine squads and um, uh, very very mobile as well, so you can put his power in when he's needed. Can kill vehicles as well, which is um, quite important for this army. Next image, um, this is my other Chaos Space Marine squad, which is not finished. Um, the uh, the banner bearer here, the icon bearer, is using some of the possessed uh, kit, which um, I, I got with the um, the battalion box or the, the the battle box or whatever you call it. Um, don't really like using possessed because they can't have a vehicle, I think. So well, not that I can remember anyway. So well, if they can, big deal. I've I've not converted them. I haven't put the models together, so whatever. Um, the champion's quite cool as well. He's got um, a knight pickaxe and he's got the um, empire general um, head, which I think works quite well. Um, this guy's going to be called Kuros Demon Spire. So I'm going to develop a bit of fluff for him as the um, campaign continues. Next uh, photo, this is probably the, uh, the part of my army which has got the most attention from fellow 40k players, is the uh, obliterators, which um, are pretty impressive. 
What I've done with these guys is I've bought the Gale Force 9 um, magnet bases, which are the right size for the like Terminator bases, and I've bought a, a box of Warhammer Minotaurs, which I've used for the bodies, and then I've put the two default heads, which I got with my Defiler, onto their, to these guys' heads. I've used a, a different top for the Defiler, as we'll see shortly. But then I've just picked through the um, the um, Gaming Club bits box for whatever I could, really. Um, Havoc launchers, um, you know, assault cannons from the classic Space Crusade, tower um, burst guns, melter guns from classic Space Spring kits, you know, there's the Chaos Dreadnought arm, you name it. These guys have got a, a nice little array of, of bits and pieces, so um, they're looking really cool. And, of course, um, my Defiler, what I've done here is I've bought a miniature from the Reaper Miniatures, which is this big guy on the Skull Throne, and I've just planted it on top of the Defiler um, head, just lopped off the head and the bits at the top, and I've just added a little bits of spikes and stuff to, to mount him. But um, this guy's really cool. I call him the Doom Throne. And um, he just is really an imposing side of the battlefield. Obviously, it makes him taller and easier to shoot, but I don't really care. He just looks really cool. Um, it's going to be a mission to paint him. I've done a lot of painting at the top, but um, as for the actual brass and metalling work, as can, excuse me, as you can see, I'm only at the uh, 10 bit stage, and I'm having to going to go over this with um, bulk on metal and the the red parts with more layers of red and highlighting it up. But um, turning out to be really cool. The defiler's fun to use. He almost always dies quickly though, just probably because he looks so menacing. Next image, there's a Land Raider here um, with the Forge World doors, which I think were quite a cool little touch. It's going to take me a while to paint the sky. I'm going to call him the uh, the Dark Judge. And um, the Land Raider man, really, uh, I found it to be useful. Uh, one comment I got from a more experienced Chaos player was that um, the Land Raider is quite a lot of points. If it dies, you know, you've got a lot of points with the guys inside it doing very little. Um, what I have found, though, is if I am a bit conservative with it, um, you know, in games with, with missions, the land raider is just one thing that you can't really um, go wrong with when, you know, contesting an opponent's objective. It's very hard to kill, and of course it scares away a lot of targets with the sort of 18-inch threat range with, you know, moving 12, unloading the term, that is them assaulting. Um, so I'm glad that it hooked it, and I think that really suits the style of play that I've adopt adopted in 40k. Just speaking of my games, um, I've played maybe seven or eight games now. I've lost two games, haven't had any draws really, and I, I felt that, you know, just 40k players in general in my community, I've found that a lot of them aren't very sort of forward thinking, aren't very sort of keeping their eye on the prize in terms of missions, and I've, I've, I've won a lot of games very easily because my opponent's just walked ahead and started shooting stuff and hasn't really, you know, made any de dedicated, um, you know, forward thinking, uh, big, big picture sort of moves towards the objectives, and the two games where I have lost, um, you know, they were actually quite well fought, um, highly contested games where I didn't, you know, quite get the objective at the end. But in general, the army's been performing well. I haven't really tested it against um, any really, really um, top-notch powerful armies. I did have a game against one very nasty Blood Angels list with, you know, all the toys. But I managed to beat that guy just due to, you know, rolling slightly better than him and, you know, making my decisions slightly better than he did as well. Um, so, you know, this army can fight, you know, if I wanted to up it for a tournament, I'd drop stuff like um, maybe the Defiler for more uh, obliterators and whatever, but I'm just having a lot of fun with it, and uh, I'm not really there to sort of win tournaments, this is more for, you know, playing, you know, a lot of fun games, and when it comes to tournaments, usually there are events where there's Fantasy Division and a 40k Division, and I'll usually be in the Fantasy Division. Next photo, I'm just going to have a, um, a few more pics of my favourite models here with, you know, a white piece of paper in the background just to try and give a bit, a bit of a better look at the lighting. Um, Zufo here, quite a detailed miniature with resin, uh, parts of the bits are broken off, and as you can see I haven't actually attached his cape or his group of skulls underneath the storm bolt, or I might come back to those, but um, for now I'm just trying to sort of get as much detail going as I can on him. Uh, next image, just a better look at Gertog Blackbeard, the uh, sparring champion here. Um, a, a lot of the... Um, I'm quite lazy with a lot of edging, really, with the yellow, and as you can see on some parts it's really smudged all on, and other parts it's, you know, uh, just nicely sort of tweaked on in the in the um, the far edges, but quite a cool model, and I like his posture, he's just, um, you know, quite cool with his hair flowing and his um, finger pointing. Next image, um, a bit of a better look at one of the uh, obliterators here. You can see that this one's actually got a lot of flamers and so forth, and there's the uh, Terminator Reaper auto cannon underneath all of that. So that's actually worked out quite well. Um, next, the Demon Prince, we've already had a look at him, but um, yeah, I think what I'm going to be doing is just you know, continuing to work with the lighting and just getting it to look as very deep as possible with a lot of layers showing through. Um, this is my other uh, guy, and as you can see, this, this guy's only at the point where I've done the um, blood red mixed with skull white highlight. He's yet to have the, uh, the yellow edging stage applied to him, but once that's done, you know, it really brings out the models. 
Uh, this Terminator features Zufor's other alternative helmet, so um, that's what he looks like. Again, this guy hasn't had the, the yellow treatment. And um, there's the a better look at the Doom Throne guy, although the um, the photo got a bit blurred here, so I guess you can't see that too well. Next one, this is uh, Ratface. He's one of my favourite uh, Chaos Space Marines here because he's got a Plague Monk head, you know, the one with the half half metal face on him. So uh, Ratface, really cool little guy. And next photo, there's the um, dude with the Halberd from the Chaos Knight kit and the head. Um, so looking quite cool there. And my Icon Bearer with a Marauder head, looking um, pretty good as well. Um, although the, um, the the flesh you know toner on his face is a bit smudged, so I think I'll probably go over that with something else and try and pick out the, the detail a bit more. And I think lastly, um, here on no, our second to last is uh, my Rhino with um, Chaos um, Warrior head poking out from the the hatch. Um, this guy's done quite well in games. I actually forgot to forgot that Rhinos had bolters built into them, so I didn't put any bolters on. But I can always um, you know I haven't glued it on yet, so I can always put in a set replacement. And my other obliterator with a, uh, a Chaos Dreadnought arm. So um, this guy's looking pretty cool as well. Hope you guys have been enjoying these picks. Um, eventually I'll get some 40k battle reports up. There should be a lot of fun working on a terrain board as well. Um, you know, news about that soon. But in the meantime, um, yeah, just stay, stay tuned. I'll be having some more stuff on 40k for you guys in a while.